the feeling I think across Europe, what's starting to happen in various countries is that when you pass as a society, demos to a government or new institutions or hierarchical party structures, we're robbed of our voice. And citizens must now do politics. We cannot allow institutions, party machines, or outmoded ways of thinking uh, to stem or inhibit the rise of what we see as a democratic, progressive left. Uh, we see today parties throughout Europe who betray their most basic principles to form a government. We've seen it in countries throughout Europe. It, it happens all the time. It's part of the structure and the way that Europe is run. And democracy is not val val validated by uh, moving actors on stage, and we seek to change the set of that stage and to rewrite the play, if you'd like. Um, so, why do I support the M25 movement, and, and why should you? Well, I think it's a, it's a modest first step. It's a move in the right direction. Because for Europe, as we say at the moment, and globally, it's a time of crisis, and the crises are many. And we must have the courage and vision to imagine an alternative Europe and give voice to new horizons that are not being discussed, that are off the political narrative. And we may be derided as dreamers, but I think the, the left in general throughout Europe are now characterized by, by people who have awoken actually from a dream that was actually turning into a nightmare. Um, so, in terms of DM25, you're probably all familiar with Yanis Varoufakis, the finance minister who led the negotiations with the Troika. So from our own perspective, we could sit here all night and debate Syriza and the, what they should have done, what options were available. We don't blame Syriza. Sometimes I think the hopelessness of your situation has to be exposed by your own failure before you can then start asking the real questions. And I think that's what Syriza's election victory, the optimism that surged forward and then the crushing of that, not only in its dealings with the Troika, but then the, the referendum result and the capitulation of the Syriza government. It exposed, at that moment, uh, the reality of the problem. And therefore, DiEM25 recognize, or at least we think, that to undermine global capitalism and the, the market economy and the, the neoliberal agenda at the moment that is all pervasive, you cannot do this as a nation state. And we've seen, with the result of the, the referendum here, uh, that very retreat, that play on right-wing populism, on retreating the national boundaries of some sense of security, when all it does is it is no form of escape at all. Um, so the lesson was, was learned from Syriza and, and Yanis Varoufakis founded the movement. Um, so we are looking for a pan-European movement. There's DM uh, organizations throughout Europe and we want uh, to, to build this movement to start asking the fundamental questions and change the narrative. And our hope is to uh, move forward with concrete demands. The left is split, you probably see it in the debate during the referendum between this, this notion of Lexit, you know, leaving and retreating the nation state as a way of, of protecting and, and, and nurturing citizens. We don't think that's, that's real. That's the, it's, it's an old left way of thinking of waiting for this event that will somehow happen that, that leads to the, the glorious revolution. Whereas them is actually fairly modest in its first asks. And it's through those modest questions that you ask of the technocrats in Europe is that you can then expose the actual feelings of the mechanisms of it. So stuff like transparency, why can't we have you know live streaming of, the, of these hidden debates? Why can't we see how these treaties are negotiated, etc.? So the demand that we make is to democratize uh, the economic politics of the EU. And we live in a democracy at the moment that presupposes that this idea of economics is accepted and beyond the power of control of the commons of people. This is not part of, of, you cannot question the market system uh, democratically. We have no control over it. It's a natural phenomenon that is, it's technical and it cannot be altered. We reject that. It's an illusion. Um, so there's a number of demands that they make. You can read the manifesto and you will see that. Um, I'd also like to talk, they only said it at the start in regards to DM25, but we can't introduce you to the, the leaders of it in Belfast because you are the leaders of it. There's no hierarchy in, in DM25. No one will tell you what to do. No one will, will tell you this is the way things are. It's self-regulating. We come together as a group. Now, they call the, the most effective sort of small units of this is DM25 Spontaneous Collectives, DSCs. Um, and they can sort of select among themselves coordinating committees. So myself and Peter have done a lot of work, but we're, you know, come and join us and get involved in the actual practical organization. But the more local it can be, seven or fewer members that can network at local level and then feed around other groups. 
and also the, the online connectivity of it is, is really important. Um, we've got contacts throughout Europe uh, working together. It's a horizontal thing, as I said, there's no hierarchy. I'm not the leader of this. You're as much in control of this as I am. We're just here explaining our findings so far within the movement. Um, but we need to be responsible as well. Please read the manifesto. This is not about political ownership. This is, I, I'm a member of the Labour Party. This is not a Labour initiative. It's not a Green initiative. It's not a Sinn Féin, SDLP, uh, any of these parties. No one has. This is a, purely about bringing Democrats together for a progressive conversation across Europe that can challenge the status quo. Um, as the video showed, the biggest fear that the technocrats have throughout Europe is democracy. It's the, the one thing. That's why they crushed Greece. That's why they were so brutal in the austerity program that they forced upon them. And it, it is through that, it's through building transparency, uh, looking at the crisis of five realms that we talk about, public debt, banking, inadequate investment, migration and rising poverty. So you will, you will read the manifesto, go to the website. If you haven't already joined the movement, join it. There's no fee. You're not going to be paying out any money. It's purely about members getting involved and building a new type of politics. Um, a bit of background before Peter starts is, is uh, I've been pushing Diam25 for since its inception, really, um, as an idea that we should that we should really stand beside uh, and coming into the referendum, especially I saw it as a, as a nice way for those that wanted to fight for a remain, but not a remain that validated what the EU was about, but a remain vote that said there needs to be a bigger project across Europe to change and challenges. So I think it was was it a week ago? Yeah. Last Friday. I was sitting, as you do in your living room, and very poor, as you may find out when you try and contact me, about checking emails, and checking the emails, and Yanis Varoufakis popped up, and I was like, right, okay, what's this? So I checked it, and do you want to meet in Dublin? Okay, and I sort of thought about it, and thought, probably a lecture. Uh, wouldn't mind going and listening to what he has to say, uh, but then family commitments and stuff, and I meant, I'm going to have to bin that. And I said to Peter about it, you know, if you're interested, Yanis is, I think he's doing a, a talk or whatever in Dublin, and he texted me the next morning and said, yep, yeah, I'm going to go down to that, I want to hear what the guy's got to say, so then I thought, well, give us a lift then, Peter, and I'll, I'll go myself. So we drove down to sunny Dalkey, um, south of Dublin, and went into a hotel, and Janice is in the, the lobby with his wife, and we sat down, so we sat down, we exchanged mobile numbers, and we were sort of, when's the lecture start, this is it, we invited to talk to you, you know, and we're going to meet Peter, a couple of colleagues from Day 25 Ireland. Um, so we met Yanis, which is a bit surreal when you've seen somebody on TV walking into the, these talks in the, in the EU and suddenly you're having a conversation about politics in Northern Ireland or a referendum coming up. Really open guy and, and, and very authoritative. And then we went to a marquee uh, near the beach and met Brian Eno, who's another co-founder of Day 25. Now, from me and Peter's perspective, then, what, in a bit this sort of, is this happening? It seems a bit surreal <coughs> chatting to Brian Eno about European politics. Um, we found that there's commitment by these guys, solid, hands-on commitment to say we want to do something, we want to build a movement. Um, so in our conversations, we said, you know, it would be really beneficial if you would come and do a talk in Belfast. And Yanis immediately was like, we'll do this, we'll make this happen. He's very, you can probably tell from watching him on TV and video clips, he's, he's a pretty logical kind of guy. And he said to me, um, venue, and I was like, uh, black box, so when Jones done the talk in the black box, and this, a couple of months ago I went to it, and he's like, uh, capacity. 200, I think. It's not enough. We need a thousand. Right, okay. And then he goes, I'm going to get you Ken Loach. I will get you Brian Eno. And Brian's like, he can't say no. Uh, and then he says, I'll get you the, the mayor of Barcelona. No, no. I'll get you the deputy mayor. He speaks better English. <laughs> <laughs> Brian went off this list of, of, of celebrity backers. And if you know anything about Diane 25, it's an interesting movement because it, it's able to accommodate Chomsky and Slavoj Žižek which is not easy because these two guys have been having a, a verbal war for, for nearly a decade, I think, on, on theory. Um, it also was backed by oh, the likes of Owen Jones, Ken Loach, who I mentioned, John McDonnell from the Labour Party, Caroline Lucas. Um, so a broad spectrum of really interesting people. But what it's allowing us to do now with the networks that we've built is contact these people in the rebel cities, uh, in Spain, <coughs> uh, and have conversations with them and see how they can help our movement, how we can help theirs, and really be actually sincere when we talk about being internationalist, being pan-European, rather than sitting in rooms in Belfast talking about it, but not actually doing something concrete about it. So one of the things we'll, we'll come out of, I hope, tonight's meeting is people who are willing to help organize this event. We want a smaller event in Belfast, where we can have sort of keynote local speakers to build awareness, 
and then I think build up towards this this grand Nuremberg rally of <laughs> the M25, if you like. Um,